Hey, pay attention. If you look at the details, there's a lot of useful information in this video. So you want to sharpen your chainsaw. You want to do it by hand. You don't have any fancy jiggery or anything. You're like me. You want to go quick, but you're willing to go one step beyond just sticking it in a vise and freehanding it. The bar is clamped with a C-clamp that has a flat bottom and that way it can be clamped to a table. In between the workbench and the clamp is a piece of plywood and this piece of plywood has 30-60 degree angles on it relative to the bar. Running parallel to this bar are three pencil marks and the angles crisscross through the center one. And now from up here, set up to do these teeth. If we lean to the right, we'll see the pencil line that's on the right. And if we lean to the left, we'll see the pencil line on the left. We use this to adjust the plywood to get it perfectly straight. Now the chainsaw is not fastened on the back side, but moving it back here a little bit has very little effect where it matters because of leverage. And then with the view from up here, it's an easy matter to line up your file with this pencil line and you'll get a perfectly 30 degree tooth after some practice. As I've said, it's set up to do the teeth on this side. So the catch is you'll have to unclamp it and you'll have to flip it around such that you can get your body on this side of the chainsaw to comfortably lay both arms over the chainsaw and do the teeth in the other direction. It is my opinion that sharpening a chainsaw is beyond what human beings can really do. Skill can get you pretty far and I know a lot of people would like to think that they can take pride in their ability to sharpen one of these things, but when you're dealing with precision, like cutting instruments, uh, the uh, range of human error is way outside of what is ideal. Okay, that's being nice to us. Let's be honest, we're just not machinery. And so a jig can definitely get you closer. When I'm using a smaller chainsaw like the 170, I just freehand it in the vise every time. I don't use any jiggery because there's less at stake and it's a cost-benefit analysis. You have to determine your own level of commitment. You decide your own level of involvement. But with a bigger chainsaw, and I'm cutting bigger rounds, I want to mow through them straight, and I don't want the blade to dip, sorry, bar, to drift. And so here I am trying to be as close as I can. For just cutting logs, this will do. But this is, I want to show you an undeveloped idea of mine that potentially, not to brag, but could be a very good idea, so consider it with me. Just a golf ball with a female nut, two pieces of plywood, and at their center there's a bolt that's embedded on one side. There's already a hole in a, in a bar. Now obviously teeth stick out farther than the bar and that's so that when these little teeth make their cuts, it makes a kerf that's wider than the bar. So the teeth are proud and if you tighten this a little bit, it grabs really securely. So we just want to look closely here. We want to set the height, but don't worry about height for the moment. Just think about, think about the wood as being a guide so that we can see exactly what 30 degrees is. Quick improvement, I clamped the whole thing to the table with another clamp. Again, this, is, this could all be done in a vise, of course. One of the things that matters most is consistency. You want to find a, a repeatable procedure. 
And so this thing gives us all sorts of reference points that we can use to set the jig every time with respect to the chain. It's fairly easy to adjust and move and find a new tooth. Actually, I shouldn't do that. I should push it this way. When you're, when you're advancing to the next tooth, you want to push it this way. It gets caught on the jig less. I haven't really been thinking about this for a long time. I kind of dug it out of storage because I don't use it. But I'd have to start thinking about it again in order to determine how to do it quickly. I kind of worked out a pretty good procedure when I was still playing around with this. But as I said, it's been a while. Here I have a file. It's triangular. And it's dedicated to rakers. So here's another really cool feature of this thing. You can get the tooth out of the way. And now that it's protected, there's no way for me to screw it up with the file. And it makes doing your rakers a lot easier. They don't have to be at 30 degrees, but it's protecting the chain. And another cool feature of this thing, note the orientation. This is for this type of tooth, but you just flip it around and you can do the next tooth. They're like left-handed and right-handed and it's a pain because you have to stand on one side or the other, which is another benefit of this sort of method. What I mean is that I could be on this side or this side, or over here, whatever is comfortable. And as I am right now, this tooth would be comfortable. Just to recap, there are some pros and cons. First of all, it's lovely that a tooth gets grabbed by this jig and it doesn't move much. It's much more secure when you're filing it than just a free tooth that you would do freehand in a vise. Another great feature is that it acts as its own scabbard, at least to some extent. The nose of the uh, chainsaw is completely covered, so you're less likely to nip yourself on the corner there. But there's also plenty of room for improvement. One thing I would like to see added to it is um, a sort of linkage that connects the two halves together so that they move in unison, so that you don't have to try to align both of them at the same time. I'd also be really receptive to hearing ideas about how to quickly set the height and designate it with respect to the chain for every single tooth. Like I said, consistency. But as with any invention, the trouble is finding simplicity. Simplicity is complicated. Let me know what you think. Unfinished idea. I do have a couple notes somewhere about how to you know, make its dimensions a little better for slightly, get in touch with me in the comments if you want to know and I can tell you everything that you need to know. Note that there's a misalignment there because of the spacing you know, of your bar. Um, what else do I have to tell you? Nothing really. I, it's cool, just didn't finish it. Lots of ideas. Also try this, it's definitely worth trying. This is really low commitment. This is a lot of tinkering. Or, you know, just do what I usually do and just use a vise. Okay, finish the rakers and I'll be done. Have fun out there. Don't drop a tree on your foot.